The global safety net is like a big net. Imagine you're at a circus performance or a performance of acrobats that are using a high-flying trapeze. They always have a safety net down below because sometimes they could slip and fall and the net catches them. What we're trying to do is to create a net that catches us as a species, for all the species on Earth, for our atmosphere, for having what we call a living biosphere. Eric Dinnerstein is a conservation biologist. He heads up a team that's put together a roadmap and a literal map for saving our planet and its species from global warming. It's called the Global Safety Net. A map that basically says, here are the places that we need to set aside for conservation. What we're suggesting for the biodiversity side is to agree to set aside roughly half of the planet for conservation, and we live on the other half. By setting aside that half for conservation, we not only solve the problem of climate change, but we also provide enough land for other species to, to live with us, to coexist. We also prevent the possibility of future pandemics from occurring. The safety calls for habitats to be connected. What would it look like for all the intact habitats and national parks of the world to be connected by corridors so species can move from A to B to C if the climate shifts um, over the next 10, 20, 30, 100 years? Dinnerstein spells out why it's important to protect species. If we don't save species, we won't save the habitats. They're interdependent and we don't want to see more pandemics. So we have to protect the tropical forests that are the breeding grounds for these. Achieving the global safety net may sound like a monumental task, but it's not as tough as we think. Right now, about 15%, almost one third of the way there, is already protected by governments and by federal, state, local, whatever, around the world. So that's a good start. When we mapped out this global safety net, it turned out that as much as 35% of the safety net is composed of lands that are either controlled, they have title to, or they claim indigenous communities. And the single most important thing we can do is to empower indigenous groups to have title to their lands and help them manage them better. If we do that, we get probably 90% towards our goal of setting up the safety net. So it's all doable and it's also affordable. We've done an estimate. We think it would cost about $100 billion a year to erect and maintain the safety net. Now think of how much we're spending to combat the pandemic right now. It's way past that. It can be done, but we just have to act now. This biologist is hopeful. The good news is if we erect the safety net now and make sure that it's sturdy, and it's well anchored, we can save life on Earth and we can have a stable climate for future generations. So that's why we've done this now, because we don't have much time to waste. We've spent too long arguing about this or denying it, and now the reality is here. And we have about 10 years to put ourselves on the right path to be able to make this safety net effective. If we wait 20 years, it will be too late. You can visit www.globalsafetynet.app to see the safety net for yourself. It's easy to feel like you get disaster fatigue. You're living at home, uh, you can't go out as much, you can't do things, but this is temporary. You know, we, we, we have the power to envision a world that is much better than what we have now. This is Inside Edition Digital.